Hi, welcome to the Data Tech. Hundred percentage of data engineers or eighty percentage of software engineers. Hundred percentage of software engineers or just fifty percentage of data engineer. Okay, what is this all about? You are saying something like a calculation. Okay, so this video is going to be completely an interesting fact. So please do watch this completely. So roughly in twenty twenty two and twenty twenty three. The prediction of data engineering job market and work market in 2025 and 2026 was like okay, people should learn uh, AI, data science, and they have to add this as part of their data engineering skill set. So then only like we will be getting a lot of job opportunities in data engineering. But what happening now? Because always the prediction may get changed. So what is happening now? From the beginning of 2024, right? The data engineering job market have adding few more skill set as part of the expectation in the JD. So what is that? Is that AI data science? No, it's not like it's not that actually. So recently, so I do have many contacts in my LinkedIn and people used to share their interview experience with me and many of my friends and my ex colleagues have attended a lot of interviews in the recent times. So this is not just within this month. It's it happened. I, I've been I have been doing this research for almost last three months with my connections. And what I come to know is people are expecting software engineering skill set as part of the data engineering skill set. Okay, so now as a data engineer, how should I know whether what are all the skill sets or software engineering and whether do I already know that or not? So that's why I started with 100% data engineers or 80% software engineers already. Okay. So what are the primary skill set of software engineers? Okay, let's start doing the list. Programming language and SQL. And then you need to know data structures and algorithms. And then databases, version control system, DevOps, software development lifecycle and methodology. Like you need to know the Agile methodology, Scrum and all those stuff. Web development, cloud computing, testing and debugging. So you need to know API services and how to create an API, how to write an API in any any coding it could be on what is API in first place. And then you need to know operating system, especially Linux and last mobile development. So these are all the some of the primary skill set for a software engineer, a typical software and average software engineer should know all this as part of their skill. OK, so now as a data engineer, what I know already from this list is very maximum. Right. If you see, we know programming languages and we know data structures and algorithms. Right. And we know databases. When we take databases, we need we know like SQL and even no SQLs. So we know databases, right? Predominantly SQL. And then version control system. So any developers like nowadays, like software engineer or a data engineer or a data scientist should know version control system like Git, GitHub, Bitbucket, and everything. So we already aware of it. Right. And then uh DevOps. So DevOps includes like Kubernetes, Docker, or workflow schedulers like Airflow or any other automation schedulers. So which is we are currently working on and we are somehow we are using it in our job. So that is also fine. We are doing it. And then operating system Linux, of course, we as a data engineers, we work with Linux, right? Predominantly Linux is everything for us. Software development and methodologies. Yeah, we are working in Agile, Scrum. So we are aware of it. Testing and debugging. So anyway, we are doing testing and debugging. Even we write a Spark job or a SQL job. We do test. We write test frameworks and we do testing and debugging. It's part of our any developer life. And then cloud computing. So of course, nowadays people are already started adding cloud computing as part of their skill set. And we people are working with uh, Microsoft Azure, AWS, Google Cloud, and Google Cloud again, DataProc, BigQuery. So we anyways, like we are in and out of cloud as well. So what is not there with us out of this list is API services. So we are not into API. We don't know how to write an API and what is an API, first of all. So that is very important nowadays. And I'll tell you why people are asking this. So that is the, uh, the core part of the video, actually. And then web development. So do I need to know a web development? Seriously? So do I need to know HTML, CSS, or uh, JavaScript, or any web server uh, like Flask or Danjo? So why I need to know? So I'll, I'll give you the answer for this. And then mobile computing. So mobile computing is something even a software engineers nowadays, they are not concentrating on that. So just we can remove it from the list. OK, let's come to the place like why should I have to write an API services, an API call? And secondly, why should I have to go for web development? OK, so that's why I said you are already 80% of software engineer. 
right? Because you are a hundred percentage of data engineer, right? So now, if you take companies, right, they started building products, and you may you can say like, yeah, I know people are building products. Okay, this products is all about developer perspective. So here, the end users are developer within the organization. It's not outside the world. Outside the end user is not like like non tech person. So we are building products for the developers who work with us within our organization. So this is happening. This always happens in any company. Parallelly, people will build like continuous deployment frameworks, uh, uh, data movement and replication frameworks, or they used to create this three sixty degree data product and then DALM and so many other stuff people create. So these are not uh, a business benefit projects or products. So we create a product within our company, people can use it. For example, you have a database name and you need to know how many uh, replication has been there for this database or you have a table name and you need to know this table belongs to which database and which which uh, how many replications we do have for this. So build a product for this. When you search for the table name, you will get all the details about the table, whether it could be MySQL or Teradata or NoSQL database, whatever it is. So I created a product. So now, similar to this, people are building so many products like data movement and replication. So you want a copy of the source table from your database. So you build a UI in which I'll get the request from the user saying that I need this table name, uh, one replica in my system. So I give all this, I fill all this information and in backend, it creates a schedule for this and then it will start creating the movement, the data movement and it also creates the replication. So these are all the some broad products companies are developing internally for the developers to easily complete their work. So now this has also become a very good part of the project and people are allocating budget for this. And now when you are going for an interview, right? So the entire team is almost like 15 members in your team are data engineers and you people have started building such products. And for just for uh, the building a front end with HTML, CSS or basic uh, web UI because this is an internal, you don't want to uh, perfectly design a very creative uh, UI and all, it's not required. A basic uh, UI is wide enough. So for this, we cannot go for uh, hiring, right? So we cannot go for a software engineer or a front-end developer, right? Or an API service, uh, writing an API service just for this, I'll, I'm not going to hire a software engineer with my budget what I have. So now people are expecting uh, data engineers should know some of the skill set, especially it comes to API services and basic web development uh, information. Just if you spend one or two hours of time on internet and YouTube, you will get all these. So this is what like people are expecting. Okay, so how much this is going to impact in my interview? If I say I don't know uh, HTML, CSS, or I don't know API service or any other skill set uh, that a software engineer knows, but I don't know, but they are asking me in the data engineering uh, interview. So this is not impacting a lot. Okay, this is not at all impacting. They are just considering this knowledge 10, 10 to 20 percent from you. And if you still say no, I don't know, but I can able to learn, they are ready. So they are going to judge you, select you based on the data engineering skill set and how you performed in your data engineering skill set in your interview. But why I'm telling this to you, right? So uh, preparing this is actually going to be an add on for you. So you are not going to lose any opportunities. And you may think I'm, I'm, I'm already tired of learning always new, new stuff, but that is how system works, right? So we are in open source world and like any new tech stack comes and when we see, okay, that if I add it as part of my skill set and I'm going to get more uh, visibility, then obviously we have to do it. Okay, but our primary tech stack is still data engineering, right? End of the day, the motto, company's motto is cost saving. So if I know that skill already, then it's going to be an added advantage. And even if you see in my team, people are building Gen AI, it's an internal product. So if you know how to create a Gen AI, a very basic thing, and then you can able to apply that in your project. And if you know some visualization tools and you know how to uh, project that as part of your data, and that again, going to give you some added advantage and that's what i wanted to tell you so the agenda of the video is completed and thanks for watching if you really like this video please do subscribe my channel and forward this to your friends and colleagues and please do share and tag me in linkedin as well and i do have an instagram page called the data tech where i used to upload a lot of short reels videos which will be very useful so please do follow me over there thanks for watching